Welcome back to Waffle TV, sponsored by West Beer. My name is Ross Jennings, and this evening I'm with the phenomenally talented Baby Wants Candy. How are you doing, guys? Good. Yeah, great. Yeah, great. Over here we have Ashley, yeah. Mike, Nick, and then Erica. And now, guys, I can't get over the fact that this is a full band improvised musical. That is every single thing improvised. Ross, you just improvised. It's everything. Yeah. The, the harmonies, the dances. Absolutely everything. We don't have like characters that we bring in, we don't have like stock stories. We all improvise and make it all up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's insane. Yeah. And the band as well, that is their all improvised yeah. as well. They're actually the best improvised on stage. Yeah. They are, everything they play is totally made up. Our, the our music director, Dan, is kind of leading them on piano. It's nice if you watch closely, you can see him yelling like, which is see! <laughs> to kind of like get the band all on track. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? Hey! Yeah. And, um, that's all and do you guys use a formula to some point? No, I mean, generally it's a, it's a story that's similar to yeah. archetypal stories from Broadway, okay. but there's nothing that says it has to be any exact type of story. We just take the title, whatever the title is, however we feel that should go, we start improvising it. There's elements of successful stories, like love story, that you've got to have some sort of heart in there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's some story things that all three need, some passion, excitement. Uh, <laughs> Like an alien or something. Right. <laughs> yeah. Death, maybe. Yeah. Like yeah. well, last night I was an alien, but there was nothing from the beginning of it that would have ever suggested that it was going to be. But <laughs> right. as the story unfolded, that's what happened. And have you ever hit a brick wall in terms of a, in terms of a musical? Or what happens when you do that? When you sit and look at each other and you're like, what happens next? Is there like a go-to? No. I think the lucky thing is, if, if one of us hits a brick wall, the odds are somebody else. Isn't hitting a brick wall? It has an amazing idea. So it gets you right back on track. So it's never, I've never had the experience where everyone was just like, I ain't got nothing. Yeah, and I think that that's one of the most exciting things in improv, and especially with Baby Ones Candy, where sometimes the audience is like, uh oh, how are they going to get out of this? And we might be thinking, how are we going to get out of this? But then someone may, yeah. Then then we make a big choice, we commit to it, and then suddenly, boom, we're out of it. And we feel like it's like watching an action movie. That must be so exciting for you guys because every single night you literally have a different place. But and I understand you guys do workshops as well. Um, yeah. But does that mean you teach how to people how to improvise? Yeah, there are certain techniques uh, that you, you teach. We've all trained in various uh, okay. training centers, and it's those types of techniques that you teach people uh, how to improvise. Uh, there's a big thing in improv called the SAN, okay. which means that you agree with whatever's happening in yeah. a scene, and then you add information to that. <laughs> Everybody's agreeing with everyone uh, and, and adding more stuff to it than you have more show. And would you say that can be, that can be taught? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. But to a certain degree, is it, does it come naturally to you guys? Well, if, if someone is fine, yeah. they're going to be uh, uh, sometimes better than improv, but sometimes at a disadvantage because they're like the funny ones and they always feel like they have yeah. to be on. And sometimes the best way of being a, a, an improviser is being like a listener and someone that supports. And then the funny comes naturally out of it. So uh, in some ways, if you're like a super like goofball funny man, sometimes it's better if you're a super supportive like listener. It's like we're all really great improvisers since we were five years old. And so then we get taught sort of behave appropriately. And in classes, all we do is teach people to act more like they did when they were five years old. Yeah. Just be honest and playful and silly and weird. And your workshops are bringing this back down. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And also reminding people of like sort of good behavior that you have in a conversation, listening to people get to the end of their sentence, and then responding to that, and like being, making it clear that you've heard what they're adding information, and saying, as opposed to like, thinking in your head what you're going to say next, while somebody else is talking. And will we be, will we be looking forward to you next year as well? Is that still undecided? They'll have us. Yeah. I hear they'll be begging. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you hear that? <laughs> all my friends are already. Oh, right. okay. And I'm seriously looking forward to seeing you guys. We all are. So thank you very much for speaking to us today. It's lovely to meet you. And um, don't forget to catch these guys at Assembly George Square, 8:30 p.m. every night. This is Ross Jennings from Waffle TV, sponsored by Ross Beer. Ross, your title this evening is Peacock's Explosion. <laughs> Peacock's Explosion. <laughs>